Hello YouTube, this is the last video about this monitor controller. We arrived to the point when we have to do some kind of digital setup on our inputs and on our outputs. To reach these uh, functions, you simply just have to select your desired channel, what you want to adjust, and then you just have to press the button for long time. So what is this uh, offset? In these settings you can add 12 dB or you can deduct 12 dB. So it's uh, not switching any kind of gain or anything as into the signal chain, is simply just modifying the attenuation network how it's operate. I think this function is clear to everybody what it's doing actually. So let's jump uh, now to the next one which is you can change the input to balanced or to unbalanced. The next setting is about the gain. You can add additional 4 dB gain to the input uh, channel. To, to finish the settings for this channel you just have to touch any button what you want to touch. So now you can jump to the second one and this one is the same on all inputs. On our outputs it's a bit different. Let me show you. Okay, again we have this offset. We again have the balance and the unbalanced, but here we have some kind of really interesting setup. In that way, you can switch off the attenuation network completely only for this output channel. I think this is a really nice tool if you have more than one recorder and you're just using one or two uh, monitor speaker. Let me jump out. Let's go to the second channel and uh, let's check it if we have the same settings. So offset, the same, balance, unbalanced and again bypass or not bypass. But the fourth one is totally different from these three. Let me show you. You can use as a subwoofer output. It's not meaning this uh, device contains any kind of low pass filter or high pass filter or whatever. So let's see how it's working now. Now the first output is switched on, okay, and then I can switch on the fourth output and I can switch between the main outputs and the subwoofer always stay or I can switch it off. Okay, let's jump now to the system setup. You can reach the system setup by simply just press these two buttons together, okay, and then the first offset, it's a uh, it's a different story like what you have offsets on the input or on the output channels. This offset means it's only for you, it's like a virtual zero point. For example, uh, you can adjust your zero point below the original zero with let's say with 20 dB and on that way you can rise up the gain on your monitor speakers and uh, you will get, let's say, extra 20 dB headroom. It's uh, really handy if you have uh, really shitty records or you just want to li listen some kind of tape or whatever. Of course, they will never reach this 0 dB. So on that way, if you turn again up on your monitor speakers, then your 0 value here on the display, it will refer to the real life 0 dB. So then if you want to add let's say 9 dB more just to listen back this old kind of records you can simply add more 9 dB gain which is like a virtual plus 9 dB gain. I, I hope you guys understand the concept here. For myself I think I will rise up this with uh, more 11 dB and then I will get this 9 dB extra headroom for that I just have to add uh, more minus 11, which is 54. Okay, let's see now how it's working. So we can go down. Okay, so this is like a minimal level. Here is my virtual zero level. Okay, and then I will have 9 dB extra headroom, which is not exist in a device. So don't worry, it will not add anything as or extra gain, nothing. It's just a virtual zero point. But for me, it's a really handy tool. The next setting is about your headphone amplifier. 
I don't know if you remember for it, but we installed here a relay into the headphone amplifier section. And actually this menu here, it's modifying with this relay the headphone amplifier. So it's add additional 12 dB, if I remember good, or can be 4 dB. I don't know how, how much, but it's add additional gain to here, to your headphone output. And why is it so important? On that way, you can use consumer grade headphones and professional grade headphones. The consumer grade headphones that are working on a low impedance, let's say 32 ohm or even 16 ohm. But the professional headphones, like uh, this for example, they are working on really high impedance, so it's meaning your headphone output needs to be rise up the level of the, the voltages to make sure it will generate enough uh, current in your headphone and you will get the desired level of power, let's say half watt or one watt. Don't worry, I tested out already with uh, six headphones and this high gain settings is not adding nothing noise to the output. Nothing, zero noise. I don't know how they did it, uh, but this headphone amplifier, it's uh, probably this is my favorite part in this uh, monitor controller because this headphone amplifier, it's unbelievable. The next setting is about uh, this monitor controller will act like a master or a slave. If you have a multi-channel setup, let's say 5.1, 7.1 or Dolby Atmos or whatever, on that way you can use this, of course with some kind of additional uh, converter or multi-channel output from your mixer, but on that way you can use this one as a complete surround monitoring system. Very smart. And the next setting is, I think you guys will love this function. So what is this? This here will give you the option to control your monitor controller with the infrared remote controller. Eh? <laughs> it's a really nice touch, I think. And I already did a setup and uh, I find uh, this uh, remote controller in my boxes. It's uh, Logitech uh, Harmony 555. A really nice uh, remote controller in, and it's freaking smart. So what you can do with this remote controller, you can connect this to your computer via USB and then you can download from the internet from the Logitech Cloud the profiles for your devices. But this is not a fully interesting part. The next part is more interesting. You can do like activities, let's say you can program this remote controller to send out I don't know how many hundreds or thousands of commands to different devices until your activity is starting. I think you can get a picture what you can do with this. I already did a, a general basic settings for this monitor controller, maybe you can see. So now the MC624 is sitting here and now what I can do with this, just listen. Okay, volume down, volume up, <laughs> step between the inputs, step down between the inputs, okay, switch different outputs, what I pro program at here, so output one, output two, oh, output three, output four, which is now it's in uh, subwoofer mode, so I can switch on or off the subwoofer. Okay. And, but I also programmed this numeric keypad here to the desired input channel. Let's say, for example, input four. Okay. So this is what you can do with this uh, menu point here in the system setup. Oh, where is these functions? Because this is a really important, like a mute, left and right, mono, differential, and dimming. So I teached all of this system together to use this uh, joystick here with the button on the middle for the main functions. For example, the mono, the differential, the mute, 
and uh, and the dim. Okay, so now at the moment this is my dim. It's it's in in the middle. Ah, but the best <laughs> is just coming now. You can use this really high end, really big, beefy remote controllers, which is mainly produced for the high end market. And nowadays, you can find those kind of heavy, big remote controllers on eBay for nothing. Because nowadays, everybody is controlling the units with the iPhones or with the iPod or whatever. So I saw one remote controller, which is a really beautiful and big remote controller with color touchscreen. And it also have a kind of uh, really big button with the press. So I think this is what will be my uh, big remote controller for this monitor controller. But at the moment, I will use uh, this really nice uh, Logitech uh, remote controller. Even from my sofa, I can switch the monitoring system. I really like it. Thank you guys uh, in a sound sculpture. Really nice function. Okay, the next menu point is a bit dangerous because here you can clear everything what you did until <laughs> you now, including the remote controller. So, no, I don't want to do this. Before I hook up this monitor controller into my studio, let me share with you guys my final words. Kind of. So first let me start with the good things, what I like about this monitor controller. The sound. Guys, <laughs> this monitor controller, it don't have sound, yeah? <laughs> so no noise, no distortion, nothing. It's unbelievable. This is the clearest, cleanest device what I heard ever in my life. It's unbelievable. We did here some kind of blind test with my friends and <laughs> this was actually really funny because they cannot tell me what's the difference between this and between this. <laughs> really. So if you want to buy a cable, what you can control with the remote controller and you can adjust the attenuation and uh, you want to switch between inputs and outputs, this is the best cable for that because <laughs> I'm telling you guys, this monitor controller is absolutely acting like a piece of cable. I really like the design of the front panel, uh, mainly because of these really old fashioned switches and these big LEDs and the, the seven segment display. I really like it. I also like this level controller because this is so precisely it's just jumping from one dB to the next dB and is never missing one. Maybe if I'm turning it really fast, but no, I, I cannot. I also like this front panel input because on that way I can connect my iPhone or my iPad or my uh, Walkman or whatever and I don't have to jiggling here on a, on a back side of the unit. I also like the back panel construction and the quality. All the inputs and outputs, it's from Neotrick, it's really top-notch quality and it's never missing any kind of connections. So you will not get any kind of noise or crackling uh, after you connect something. I also like the surround control possibilities and uh, this driver output on the back side where I can connect my analyzer, my recorder or whatever as an absolutely individual output. And of course, what I like the most in this monitor controller is the fully balanced design inside. Really nice design, I really like it. Thumbs up guys in a sound sculpture to do this monitor controller like this. Let's talk about now the bad things. Don't worry guys, nothing really huge bad about this monitor controller. It's just maybe my idiotism or my, or my perfectionism. So what I don't like? I don't like how the case is designed. Let me show you. Okay. And <laughs> so these noises is came from the top cover and from the bottom cover because they forgot something. They don't design nothing 
screws or holes or any other kind of clip solution or something to hold the top cover to the front panel. And it's true also on the back side of the unit. So maybe here you can see if I'm lifting, yeah? So this is, this is I think this level of construction is not matching with the quality what we find inside. And it's a really bothering if, if you have a really big monitor speakers with a big subwoofer, let's say 10 in subwoofer, I can imagine this whole rack unit, if it's installed into your desk, let's say half meter far away from your subwoofer, I am 100% sure this case will do something like this. So guys, please do here some kind of bending inside or outside even, and just drill here a hole, or here a hole, or here, or maybe three hole, and then just fix it, the top and the bottom, to the back panel and to the front panel. The next mechanical issue is with this back panel. You guys remember it uh, when we installed this back panel. It, it was so hard to install this metal to the XLR inputs and also to this jack input uh, ports because it's kind of evil look, yeah? So you have to play a lot, like 10 minutes if you don't want to break the PCB or the XLR connectors. So guys in the Sun Sculpture, please change here a bit uh, the design for, for these cuts. We have here on the front some kind of really ugly gap between the front panel and between the cover plates. But it's only in the middle, so it's meaning the front panel itself is distorted or bended on a middle. And it's true not only on a bottom, it's also true on a top. So it's a really ugly and I think it's play a really big game on this uh, noise. So what can be a main reason for that? This front panel is made from aluminium. And the Sun Sculpture guys here, they designed this uh, really big cut for the seven segment displays. So because of that, the front panel here is really weak. Okay, so they have two options or they will add some kind of additional metal plate behind the display or maybe if they really designed here some kind of screws to hold the front panel to the top panel and to the back panel, then this issue will be disappeared. Um, guys in a sound sculpture, please, change this switch to something else because time to time is not switching on, it's some, stopping somewhere here or even if I push it fully, 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 it's, it's don't wanna switch on the device. And uh, time to time I'm hearing some kind of really ugly, I don't know, crackling noise from the switch. On that way, I'm not sure if this switch will not kill this uh, switching power supply unit inside. It can be a faulty switch so guys in a sun sculpture, please change this switch to something else like, like this one, for example. I think it will look nice, eh? Let's jump to the next issue. It's again on the front panel. Uh, I have some kind of problem with the quality of this potentiometer. Here on the bottom, uh, the left channel, it's really out from the level compared to the right channel, let's say until here and then. Here it's everything is normal, but what the problem with that? If I switch the headphone amplifier to the high gain and I wanna drive a professional headphone, believe me guys, this is really annoying because the full volume is somewhere here what my headphones can handle. But if I change to the low gain settings, the nine or a 10 is not enough to drive uh, my headphones. So. So now you can understand this 5% error here on the beginning, it's really a big portion from the full range if, if I'm driving uh, professional headphones. I think you guys in the Sound Sculpture have to change the design to this rotary switch based uh, resistor network solution. 24 different level for a headphone amplifier, I think it's far away more than enough. So 
The next quality issue on a front panel is this window for the infrared sensor. Uh, the side is so sharp, it even can cut my finger. I'm telling you guys, it can cut my finger if I want to. And now if you want to listen to me, it's a really nice advice. Guys, just cut here a circular hole, okay? And then just make the, the edge like a conical shape. The next one, it's again advice. And I don't think so it's a problem, but it can be much more nicer if we get some kind of adjustment possibilities on the power unit itself, where we can tune this power rail to the absolutely matching 16 and minus 16 volt. The next one is really just the advice. You guys have here this really big and nice and beefy aluminum heatsink. So I think it's a good idea if the design will use this one as a common heatsink for the headphone amplifier chips and also for the voltage regulators. On that way, we will not get thermal differences between the mirrored parts. What else? Hmm. Ah, backside outputs. We just have here only one pair of uh, meter output or recorder output. I know we can set up one output as a recorder output. So what's the problem with that? I will lose one channel pair from my outputs. The next problem, uh, I cannot use the fourth channel as my recording output if I have a subwoofer. Okay. Or I cannot use one output fully like a recorder output because it cannot run parallelly with the other ones. Only the fourth channel can do this. Let's say I set up the channel four as my recorder output, yeah, because this one I will connect to my meter input. Then when I doing here a switch between different monitor speakers, I'm 100% sure I will hear click noise on my recorded material, which is really not nice. So guys, please do here additional one or two extra recorder output and you guys can design with the same really nice, really high quality op-amps what we find here on the beginning of the signal chain. But this is a really big uh, limitation. If uh, this monitor controller is designed to fit into some kind of home recording studio, yeah? So how I can hook up here the one meter system, which is really important, and also recording back to my DO system. I think it's in this situation, it's impossible. My next problem is uh, this uh, big beefy power brick outside from the device. Yes, I know this is a really nice quality power adapter, but I have an issue with that. Uh, this one, it's sitting outside uh, from the monitor controller, yeah? My monitor controller will be installed into my desk where is millions of hundreds of I don't know how many cable is running. I now have possibility to drop this one somewhere really far away from my other cables and from my other gears, which can be sensible for the switching noise, yeah? So yesterday I tried out with this uh, level converter, really nice level converter, and uh, it has inside power supply, yeah? But when I came closer to my cables here, this switching adapter, it's made me this typical high frequency something in an input signal. All the professional gears have built-in power supply, like this, for example, or my artwork channel. My other problem with the unit is I couldn't find any piece of fuse inside. Uh, now I can say this is a really bad design. So no fuse here and no fuse here. So what is mean? This device cannot protect itself and this device cannot protect my other gears in the studio. So if this one has some kind of issue inside, 
for example with this uh, switching unit, then this old device will catch fire even. Or this will catch fire. Or I don't know. So guys, really, there is no professional gear on a planet without fuse or multiple fuse. For example, this Artforce channel mic preamp has a really nice solution for fuse. Let me show you. It's, it's here. Okay. And uh, this one is not only a fuse, it's also a voltage switcher. So if I'm plug back now like this, then this will be go on 110 volt. If I plug like this, so upside down, then it will 240 volt. But uh, this is really important. So I have here a local fuse. I'm 100% sure this Artworks channel also contain more fuse inside in the circuit in different parts, but this is really important. At least one main fuse, yeah? Let me show you other solution. Ta-da! You see this? So if you cannot design a fuse into your device, please do something like this. Yeah? Which is a really smart solution to put a fuse exactly right into the main uh, connector. Yeah? Actually, this is a really nice fuse. It's a 5 amp really fast fuse with all the UL listing and all these uh, blah 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 certifications. Okay, so now I'm a bit scary about this unit which is not contain any kind of fuse. So I think I will do here some kind of bodge work. So I will drill here a hole and then I will install here some kind of fuse solution, let's say up to half amp or something like this with some kind of uh, uh, similar fast uh, fuse inside. Then I can sleep well when I left uh, my studio. The next one, it's a really tiny issue. What you guys can solve with a simple change of the programming for the microcontroller. If we came down to the minimum setting of the attenuation network, I still hear something signal on the output. And how you guys can fix it? It's very simple. If we came down to the zero dB on our attenuation network, please add the mute function to it. I think you guys can solve it like this in five minutes of uh, programming. Or give us an option to set in the system setup uh, how the attenuation network work together with the mute function, yeah? It will be really nice. <laughs> oh guys, I just really love this. <laughs> attenuation network driver with relays, oh my god. I can play with that all the day, yeah? <laughs> okay, the next one, it's a really confusing. <laughs> Call me some kind of uh, old-fashioned guy, but uh, I don't understand fully how this uh, left or right exclusive listening mode is working. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Now we are on a normal listening mode, yeah? So now I want to listen only the left. And then the mute is came to the picture. Then I want to listen to the right. So now it will jump to the right. But then I cannot escape from the exclusive channel mode, yeah? So, not like the other functions, for example, the differential. No, I'm in differential, and no, I'm in normal. Same with the mono. No, I'm in mono, then I left the mono mode. But here, it's, uh, I, I, I really, I don't understand how this working. And it's also annoying, it's adding this mute also to the picture. And so on remote controller mode, it's working how it should be. The microcontroller knows somehow he has to step out from the exclusive mode and then switch on the mute. Let me show you. So I press only the mute and it's jumping out from the exclusive mode and it's jumping into the mute function. But here on the front panel is not true. So again, left mode and I want to mute the outputs. I cannot. I have to press twice. Eh. It's kind of, uh, eh. guys, please modify here the programming to work uh, similar like uh, with the remote controller. And we don't want to see this mute function together running with the exclusive uh, channel listening mode. Really, it's not necessarily. And you just do like left, right, and normal stereo. Left, right, normal stereo. This will be the best. 
The next one is only some kind of feature request from the Sun Sculpture. Guys, somehow please give us an option to make here presets. And this doesn't matter if it's a full preset like uh, uh, preset 1 for example, input 3, output 2 with the subwoofer on and the level on 40. And this should be go to the preset 1. The next preset, let's say input 1, level 0 and output 1 only. I think you guys can understand what the great deal about the, these preset options or even if you guys just give us a level preset solution. Let's say we get five or six different level preset what we freely can modify and we can recall with the remote controller it will be absolutely fantastic and amazing. And how you can solve it I think there is a really simple way just add here somewhere one extra button, maybe to here or to here and then if we press this one, this preset button, then this first six button will become the preset recall buttons or a preset programming buttons. <laughs> I hope the guys in the Sun Sculpture will accept my advices and I hope we will see soon MC624 V2. Eh? It was a lot of fun to build. <laughs> and it was a lot of fun to corrigate my <laughs> shitty jobs. And on the next week I will finish the first song with this uh, monitor controller because this headphone amplifier is just opened everything. I can hear things what I cannot hear before. My final word about this really nice blue puppy here in my home recording studio for the money. Guys, this is absolutely thumbs up. I hope you guys enjoyed, see you next time. And don't forget to subscribe, yeah? Bye. The next one is only some kind of feature request from the Sun Sculpture guys. Hmm. And then we, we arrived to, to the settings, which is, hmm. The offset means Schmidt. the offset means this channel Schmidt. the offset means Schmidt. the offset means I think uh, this uh, function I think <clears throat> I think this uh, function Schmidt. I think this function is clear for everybody what is doing <laughs> Schmidt. Schmidt. The next settings is about the gain. <laughs> Schnitt. The next settings is about this. Uh, Fucking Schnitt. So then Schnitt. you will. Uh, Schnitt. On that way. It doesn't matter what you. <laughs> and it's a not a big. And really is a not a big. Schnitt. 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 Schnitt.